Dan here. DD Speed Shop. Um, so we got to start putting parts on this fine motor. And uh, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I'm thinking. That's a problem. It slows me down thinking. Before we do that, uh, I have a water pump inside. I got a starter. We got all sorts of things. But for now, this intake manifold is a loaner. It's currently not mine. Uh, John Cecil uh, kind of donated it when we were doing the dyno pull and uh, I ordered what I thought was the exact same deal, but as it turns out, it's, it's the same intake, but it's not drilled in the four corners for uh, coolant crossover. So I want to make sure I get this back to them ASAP. So I thought we would just take this apart real quick. Well, we're going to go run over there, drop it off, hang out with those guys. You know, every now and again, you got to have Man, some of these intakes, they're so snug. Most guys would probably use a wrench on that. They even made, look at those guys, they're experts. They made custom washers. So we gotta make sure we don't lose that stuff. But we'll, uh, we'll drop this off, see how that goes, see if they're working anything interesting. If not, you'll just see us back here putting parts on this motor. So it should be a fun time. You wanna finish taking this off? Yeah. You'll just bugger it up. We can't afford to keep doing everything wrong. What else we got going on? Is that all we're doing in this video? Yeah. Is that what storyboard says? Yeah. I need a wrench. I need a 9 16 wrench. Yeah, but a wrench this time. Oh, just about dropped her. Yeah, there you go. Probably have to use a open end. Oh, that's the wrong, that's a terrible wrench. Well, yeah, what do you mean? All wrenches are the same. No, that one's got the stupid opening. Here's one. You can really never have enough, you can, well, you can use the box end. That's the same on the middle bolts. You can help out with that. <laughs> okay. The That wrench there, it's clean to fame. Oh, I can't really reach. Use the wrench, it's length, it's literally an extension. That fender is barely on there too, so be aware. Are you tightening or loosening it? Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty? I'm using all my strength. Which way are you trying to go? This, this towards the front of the car? Is that, should I go towards the front? I would. No, there we go, yeah, that was a lot easier. <laughs> than trying to strip out the cylinder head? Yeah. When there's a mark on this intake manifold, I'm telling Cecil that it wasn't me. I was damn careful when I did nothing to do with this. It was the short girl. She was doing it. Still struggle? Wow. I'm doing this while trying to film you at the same time. You know. While trying to make me look good? Yeah. That is a full-time task. Don't I know it. Holy. Are, are, loose. I can't are they finger loose? Yeah. Okay. So hopefully we can sneak this intake off and not bugger the gasket. Then we can just uh, plop a new one on with a little bit of a little bit of silicone. Oh, she's on there pretty good. I was hoping. Where's the Where's the pry bar? How have you lost the pry bar? Every single day you lost the pry bar. In my defense, I lose the pry. Oh, it's in the car. You left it in there. Left in the transmission, right? You. Left the pry bar in I there. I didn't lose it. Well, it was. It was found. What can I pry on here? That's gonna. Oh, that's on there pretty good. There's no accessories to crank on, and now that it's in the car, <laughs> it's. Should off. we take the clips off again? It's a, the clips, the front clip. Yeah. We could. Yeah, I don't want to pry on the. I need the, the bigger pry bar. Man. <sighs> Fiasco. Okay, well, we'll uh, mess with this. I don't want to pry in here because I'll be on the valve cover. That's not good. There's nothing on the back really to pry on. Why don't you go? There's this little gap right here from where I have to. Yeah, no, I've tried that, but you still end up kind of 
getting on the valve cover, see? I don't want to crank the valve cover too bad. Huh? Okay. Old one off. I took the valve cover off to get in there. It wasn't terrible. So this one again has these little plugs in the back. And uh, this manifold, it, it's just slightly different. I think it's the same. It's a poly strip dominator. It's got a little spot here for the kick down cable. And then, but both where the, uh, the bosses for the coolant are, are just locked or not threaded or whatever. So the front of it all looks the same. So we'll bring that to them. And then we'll assemble more stuff. Look how fancy this looks, eh? Roller tip rockers and stuff. All clean, brand new. Way too nice. A new day. So we went and dropped that intake manifold off there last night. And now it's time to assemble this thing. So the Amazon truck dropped a bunch of stuff off today. Actually, you know what? Side note, real quick. If you're a partsman or uh, you're part of a, you know, managing an auto parts center or owner even or something like that. So all this stuff I bought off Amazon and china junk i know i mean that being said the water pump was a gates and stuff like that. i did i bought some some quality stuff and i hear about it all the time oh you know buying junk you get junk in this land and i hear you good stuff's expensive and uh unfortunately it's hard it's kind of hard to get now um I, I buy a lot of parts a lot of used parts a lot of new parts a lot of whatever i can get and uh let me give you a little little story so we're just fresh off a throw bearing issue the throw bearing that i had ko'd you know it could have been reused but i was like you know what we'll just put a new one in that's fine i went to rock auto got my part number i wanted and uh well it's right here this was the like a, a bca that was the number i gave the guy that i did all the work myself it was 15 bucks canadian on rock auto plus shipping taxes let's say it's 30 dollars and well the lights are kind of flickering there anyways I went to the, the local parts store. They had it in stock. I, I had to pay the stupid tax. I was accepting that. $80 they wanted for it. So I kind of complained in this. And, you know, come on, man. Like, I got no problem paying some, but let's get a little more under control. I am paying $64, which was like a deal. But that was that night. Motor transmission are up part. I got things to do. I'm kind of under the gun. I am, you know, a unique situation, obviously, if you have a, a week where the car can sit. But just because I'm building cars for YouTube doesn't mean you guys don't want the car on the road that weekend or wintertime is you know, coming and going, it's, it's springtime. Can we agree on just maybe lowering the price a little bit? Like, I'm okay with paying some, some extra dollars for these things, but uh, a water pump, I think it was 60 bucks for a Gates water pump on Amazon, it's like $140. Can I meet you part way? Like, I'd love to support local. I don't want to see these places go to business, trust me. But if I keep, if I buy stuff local, I can literally build half as much. So, anyways, we ended up with a bunch of stuff. We got a water pump. I got this mini starter. Actually, you know what? I got to say, I don't know what brand it is. China. But uh, it came with bolts. I never bought a starter. It came with bolts before. We got some miscellaneous plug wires. Um, you know, this kind of, oh. AN fittings, AC performance, made in China. But I tell you what, I think they all are, and this piece was cheap. This should be able to, huh, this might be the wrong size I ordered. Yep, definitely is. For the fuel pump, I'll do buy one of those local, some clips, some uh, cotter pins, just a little crap like that. Anyways, step one, let's pull this intake manifold off. We'll scrape the gasket out. I think what I'm gonna do, we kind of ground down on the, uh, Valve cover a little bit, but I want to grind down right on the intake just so it fits a little bit because it's a friggin' nightmare when nothing fits together. And that's when things get tight, you think it's good, it's leaking, it's a hassle. I don't want to do that. So we'll pull this intake off. Well, I'll do it right now because I'm super strong. And uh, we got to clean up the gasket surfaces just a little bit. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. And then uh, I'm going to grind on this intake. I'm going to grind just the edges off. Okay, so we got the mating surfaces all cleaned up. I did give the intake a little grind. I will say, so Morsky gave me one of these super scrapers. Honestly, it's the one nice thing he's ever done. And they actually do work pretty good. So if you need one, MorskyRepair.com. Anyway, so we got these uh, gaskets to put on. I got a Fell Pro, so you know what's good. And a little bit of Ultra Gray. So I've said a thousand times, but 
with the huh, not so ultra. Um, I'm just gonna put a, a glob front and back, a silicone, but I do kind of like to glue these things down just to hold it in place. You can kind of just set them in there, and I'm not gonna completely spackle it, but uh, when you put it on, and if you don't put something to hold it, it kind of wants to fall down, you gotta line up all the intake holes. So just put a little on the back. Again, not so much for sealing, so much just for holding, but we might as well just go around the, around the piece. Well, they do say this side out or up, so make sure you follow them, just instructions. Did I glue it the right side? Embarrassing why I didn't. This side up, that means that side up. So we'll do that, kind of put that on. I like to kind of let it set up just for a minute because when you put the intake on, I mean, it's a bit of a hassle. You want it to go down right, perfectly straight, have no real issues. So we'll go ahead and do this side right quick as well. Bear with me. So we'll get the intake on. Glob, 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 glob. You guys are just in the way. He even gave me a small super scraper, a mini. Put this on. I'm gonna let this set up just for, you know, five, 10 minutes, clean up the shop a little bit. <laughs> Good one, clean up the shop a little. Make sure that's kind of centered. And then once we know that's kind of not gonna go nowhere, then we'll glob the front and the back, intake on. We have all our, our fasteners ready to go. So we'll put that on and there you go. I really took my time cleaned it. I didn't just kind of gouge it all. I put, you know, paper towel and everything because you don't want junk in a brand new motor. Well, I don't want junk in a brand new motor. Once we get that on, we'll move on to the water pump and eh, we'll make an evening of it. Okay, so we're a few minutes in. I'm fairly confident this will be okay. So let's kind of really glob on the silicone here on the old china wall. You don't need, I mean, I say glob on, but nice little bead there. Because if you don't do this, my God, will it leak oil. Kind of frustrating and all sorts of stuff. But you know what I have learned? If I just keep making mistakes, then I make a video fixing my mistake. Someone put it in the comment section. They're <laughs> like, there's no such thing as bad. You just can make a video and ultimately more people will watch. And I'm like, yeah. There's a little bit of pride involved there now and again. Not, oh, I lost the cap. Oh, it's over there. Eh, we'll put this in this box so I will not forget where it is. <laughs> okay. Try and plop this thing on. Now with aluminum intakes, it's really not that crazy because they don't weigh a whole bunch, but. Big cast ones, I tell you. That's pretty much perfect. Oh yeah, we got a nice little, nice little glob all through there. Don't want to wipe this off my mint shirt. Danny only does laundry for me once every two months, so. You think I'm dirty, huh? I try and be clean, she just won't take care of me. Okay, let's go ahead and put some hardware in here. It should be golden. Because I can't get it started. You know what, this one here I can line up for sure. That one went mint. Let's see if we can get this side. Some of these washers are cut down just because it's so close to the coolant passages. That one go in? Huh? Guess I could look from the other side, eh? Where are we here? Oh, there. I guess I could drop it all the way down. Idiot. You guys might get me putting an intake on twice. <laughs> all right. I'll get this dialed together. Oh yeah, there we go. We'll come back, valve cover on, water pump. That should be fun. Okay, so quick fast forward, we got the intake manifold on, I put the carburetor on, valve cover on. I mean, I think you saw me take all that off. So reverse change Uh we have the water pump here. I, same thing, I put a little bit of silicone um, cause it's got some gaskets, but we'll also put the bolts in here. So it's always kind of a hassle to kind of hold it all together. So the water pump, I gave it a quick shot of primer. 
And then I put some uh, Chevy Orange on it. Man, Chevy Orange does not cover for crap. So a little bit of a little bit of primer goes a long way. Okay, get this kind of started in there. Come on. Almost. There we go. Oh, I buggered this one. Did I mangle it? Get started. If you get the top two started, you're pretty much home free, I think. Just make sure the bottom ones kind of go in. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, I think we nailed it. So that should be good. Now I have to decide where I want the radiator. It's, it's kind of offset. It's where the holes are. And I watched a couple of videos and it seems like that's kind of what it is. Okay, got that one in. Good. Damn it. But, uh, so I'd rather not, you know, cut and drill and do all sorts of stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this the water pump on. Then I have rad hoses. As long as they uh, line up, that is perfectly torqued. And we should be kind of golden. So, ah, so here's the upper. So cut to length. I think that's probably good. And then the lower. Well, that's way too long. So we can obviously make that work for something. I don't even know what I bought these for. I think it was for, yeah, it must go this way. So that's fine. I mean, obviously where that is. We're in, I think there's two holes that fit and I think it looks relatively level. So I think we're probably good there. And I think I just got an oblong one hole actually in the radiator for it to kind of fit. Oh, it is close. It might just kind of go. So I'll uh, get that in there. What else we got? Oh, I have a water neck. Let's put that on right quick. Oh, I don't know if I have hardware for it. I might have been an idiot. I know it's hard to believe. Oh, I want a 160 stat. They give me a 180. I think. 180, damn it. Whatever. He's fine. This is what I got. Maybe it comes with hardware. You think? Why would I be that lucky? It's just 3 8 bolts. So hopefully I got one that's the right length. We'll do the same deal. We'll glue it all down. Well, this will probably put on. But that, this is just a stock replacement. Look at that. You know what I probably should do though? Is probably put a plug in that hole before we go any further. Because it'll be a hassle once there's a rat hose on it. And I think... There was a bag of stuff. Um, hmm. I thought I had a plug somewhere. I'd like to plug that off. I'll have to look. I'll be back. Well, I don't have pipe plugs. I also went through all of my pulleys and stuff. These are all like short kind of water pump deal things for the most part. They're also big. I prefer a smaller water pump and a bigger crank. So it's cranking the water pump. Uh, Classic, I always go with this setup. It's just so much simpler. Uh, I do have short water pumps and, and whatnot, which I think, I don't know, we could put something on there. But then you have the alternator on this side with the big long belt and I hate that, versus on this side, which is nice and kind of scrunched up. And I think I have, I see a bracket on the wall for, for, a, for a low slung, or not low slung, but like a right there, pasture side, super handy, just truck stuff, like 80 C10. So unfortunately, we're at the end there, so I've got my list of stuff I'm going to have to start getting tomorrow, but we're going to keep going through stuff striking out, um, because we stop right now, we're going to need more parts, and then I'll forget till I get tomorrow. So, if I keep working, so what we're going to do, load this thing up in the air, I'm going to put the brakes together, I'll show you that, and then starter in, and then we, I guess we mess with the distributor, but I mean, that's pretty simple stuff, no point worrying about the distributor too, too much, well... We can roll it over. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. Let's get up in the air. Let's do the brakes first. Oh, I also don't have a bolt for this. I gotta get one slightly longer. You know, just the little stuff's kicking my ass tonight. 
So there we go, little pins are in, cotter pins is all dialed together. I actually, I did throw, toss the starter in, I mean, it's two bolts. Uh, in there good. Uh, so, it's like 10 o'clock at night, Danny's actually out tonight. And the shop is an absolute disaster. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend a little bit of time, gonna clean up, and then tomorrow I can hit the uh, parts store right away and then get Danny on it. Because we have to put the distributor in, which is not difficult, but if she can hold the camera, I think we can get a lot more precise information. <laughs> I feel leery of saying anything at this point because I have made mistakes in the recent past, but we can, I have to take a distributor apart and kind of change the curve in it. We have to drop it in at top dead center. That seems like it's a thing where I know a lot of you, the older gentlemen, understand all that stuff, but the younger guys, uh, small block Chevys are so old, they're new again, and uh, if I can show someone how to time a small block Chevrolet who's just getting into it, that's awesome. I I had to learn a long time ago, and uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe you know these LS guys plug it all in, just make it work. They, they've got these things, so we got to keep it going. Drop a distributor in, plug wires, uh, you know, fill it with coolant, all that sort of stuff. We can get that all dialed tomorrow, and I got to get pulleys for it, and it's just it's a never-ending thing. So I'm going to clean up. And I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow uh, after dinner. See you then. So, new day. We're just kind of working on this thing, working through some miscellaneous problems. Got a crank. Is that thing still crooked, you think, or what? Got a crank pulley on it. Uh, got an upper rat hose. Thermostat's in. That's all kind of dialed together. So I'm just trying to do that. I think we're going to run a fuel line for it. Josh here. He's donating his time. And then I'd like to put some coolant in, but the lower rad hose is really not the plan. So I'm gonna have to go get something else. I think when I ordered it, I probably ordered it for a 327, 67 Camaro, which this is not. And I probably would have had the short water pump, which is probably very different than what this is. So we'll have to get something that works. It's in the end of the world, we can run down with the hose. And then I wanna do the distributor, drop that in. Get that all kind of dialed together. We're seeing if we can. It looks like the belt should line up pretty good, actually. I think so. Well, the back one for sure. All the front. The front one's good too. Yeah. And then I bought a. I bought a bracket so we can hang the alternator. You want a wrench or something? Wrench. They're on the wrench wall. Oh, the wrench wall. Ooh. He's snap on till he dies. He probably has one 13 millimeter that's just mint. This is uh, this is the metric. Are you still paying off that hoodie, Josh? <laughs> no, this one's done. The hood. I ordered the new one. I'm starting to weld the elbows from leaning on, leaning on cars. The hoodie's free if you give them $12,000 for a <laughs> toolbox. So we're going to get that together. Um, I like to bump the motor over. Actually, I bought a bunch of miscellaneous. So I got a dipstick tube, which we can actually hammer that in right now. That should just go swimmingly now that I have the, I have the silicone out. We might as well really just glue it right in there. It really looks like the, the lower rad hose is going to screw us. That's going to be the problem. For sure, I see that. So we're going out for one ASAP before all the stores close. Man, the saran wrap on stuff, it's a disaster. So when you put this in, you usually do a really nice job or you just gob it with silicone and hit it with a hammer? Um, yes. <laughs> he does a nice job. Josh is a perfectionist. This one should work on there. Or is that too small? For what? To drive it in with a hammer? Oh no, you, you hit the top. I'll show you the DD Speed Shop way here, right quick. I think there's a plug in it. We gotta get that out. <laughs> this is my favorite part doing this up. And honestly, you know whose problem it is? John, because he he uh, he let this happen. Oh, there's a hold those. You gotta remember that I've been working with Dallas all winter, so my standards have gone way down, like way down. My standards are so low. Oh, there's a little put like a ear, like a little uh, ear protector in there. Need like a pick. Then we'll just send that thing home. Life will be just perfect. You think I'd have a pick, eh? What are you guys talking about? He thinks it's made out of plastic. What is? Even metal is it? I don't know. I, I didn't <laughs> special order a metal one. It was that right there is what they had in stock. It's they cold. didn't have a nice low car one. Okay. Could have got a nice low car braided one. I'm making this way worse. Oh, what are you yeah. doing? You want to use a screw? You don't have to put those little hook picks. Oh, you could look in the ground, they might be there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking a deck screw. Oh, that's a good idea. That's what we really need. How much can I push into this? 
We'll just wait. Well, you know, if you had anything better to do. Oh, I'd do it. Look at that. So now, this is right how they did it in the GM factory. Oof, that's not really going in. Technique on the hammer. <laughs> the crossover. It's not working at all. I don't know what I need here. Maybe I need something to put on this. We're gonna we're gonna mangle this. If I only see you weren't so dim-witted. Hey, only the internet can call me dim-witted. <laughs> not you. Yeah, it's pretty tight in there. You got a stripper to wrench? <sighs> that's too big for that. You think? Yeah. Half inch is too small. Half inch didn't fit on that? No. Really? Eh? Let's just keep wailing on it. Maybe we can take this to the grinder. Oh, I've got it stuck. <laughs> At least there's silicone everywhere now. Maybe if I drive it inside, I'll spin it. There we go. Oh yeah, that's gonna work really good. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll vice grip it. <laughs> I didn't realize it's not even metal. <laughs> <laughs> Does this hurt your perfectionism? Man, I don't know if I want to bolt on this up here. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, is there a drive shaft this thing? Yeah, oh yeah. So we could do a burnout with it. Oh yeah. You do anything we, we want. Leave it on the stand and lower down the tire. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Perfect. In friggin' stalled. Do you want me to wipe the uh, silicone off of it? Off what? That's extra sealant. It's like a little chrome on there. I think it'll still fit. Oh, yeah. Man, that was worth all the $30, eh? Oh, that's right. Oh, full. oil in it, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't pay for that. Obviously, that's not the part I did. Someone else built the motor, put it all together. Oh, yeah. All I did was pick it up and bring it home. Okay. Well, that's... Problem. Let's do the distributor right quick. I'll take that. We got to change the weights in it. And then you can build that fuel. I thought you were doing the fuel line. What happened to that? I don't know how to do push lock. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We're using push lock fittings, but regular hose. We're using hose clamps. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, let's get some of this crap out. Look at that nice hat you're wearing. Danielle. Always be selling. You can find these hats at ddspeechup.ca. U.S. only. I'm sorry. Stop sending me mean emails. She's not sorry. She hates Canada. Where's your, where's your push lock? Well, we've successfully wasted enough time that the parts stores are all closed. But uh, we got the alternator on there. A junk one I had, which is actually kind of good. I have did a brand. Did Josh do that? He did part yeah, of it. I had it just like that. What's wrong with it? Nothing. It's fine. It's going to work. Nothing is wrong with it. Issues right there, maybe. Oh, I guess it looks a little not like straight. A little caddy wampus. So, so now what we're gonna do is mess around with this thing. Does it all have to come completely apart for the bushing, or can I just do it here? So the way this distributor is set up from factory is it's got 28 degrees i believe for, of advance in it and it's got big heavy springs in it so it's not going to make that advance until four thousand ish rpm maybe is that what this is before we're all the way advanced and uh, so what we're going to do is to adjust that there's lighter springs so you see how these are big heavy coarse ones we're gonna put these light ones in which will cause oh, can we just do this instead oh there we go so that'll cause the advanced weights to fling open a lot sooner and easier and then there's a bushing in here which controls how much timing there is so this motor may its most horsepower at 37 degrees of timing when we played with it on the dyno so our goal is when these things are flung open to be at 37 degrees of timing, we have to put the biggest bushing it has reduces the sweep, I think to 18 degrees, 17 degrees of timing, 18 degrees. So if we do 37 minus 18 with this big bushing, that'll give us like our initial timing of idling, just sitting there with no, no real load on it, somewhere in the 12 to 14 range. These are all approximate. 
which is probably what this thing wants, 12, 14 degrees initial, and then once the weights go, we'll fling it all the way in and we'll have 37 degrees of timing. As I recall, these are a pain to take off. And uh, there's no way, uh, you know those pliers. Well, that's over. They're right there. Oh, there they are. Well, these are crafting, so. So you gotta take these off, and this is where I will struggle, because these big ones are a pain. You might just end up cutting. Not the pliers for that. <laughs> well, I don't know where my small ones are. I'll be right back with different tools. Or the same tools. No, fuck. The wave is terrible for the for the for the pinch factor. And these are oh. Didn't even didn't even get myself there. Why do we even look for tools? Thanks, Josh. You really helped me well, out. You here. just diss the gift I gave you. I like this, but this model is a friggin' hand pincher with the. Uh, that crap. Okay, let's see if we can get to the. I think it has to come apart for that bushing. Yeah. I'm gonna read the instructions. Then we'll come back and take this all apart. I better not. I'm gonna lose everything here. You're running out of work, Ben. I know. These skinny fenders really don't. Help <laughs> I know. The... But you know what? The nice thing about these is they're kind of rounded, like concave, convex. Yeah, they hold the tools. Try fives. Right Man, do you ever roll roll tools into the engine bay? Okay, let's read the instructions and we'll be back uh, immediately. Remove distributor cap and rotor. Remove lock nut and washer on the bottom of advanced assembly. Are Remove bushing. Why not? I she do what I want. <laughs> she does what she wants. Maybe we can do it all together. You guys done gabbing? So I took it apart, you can do it like this. So I just took the little arms off. So this has no bushing in. You can see the advance, how much it'll move. We're gonna put the biggest black bushing in there. It sounded funny to say. Just jam this in there. And now you've eliminated how much advance you have. And it has a little washer. This is a little awkward. My fingers are fatter than I remember. Gentle. Not oh, even close. Let's see if we can, we can leather them in this. There we go. We got this little lock nut. Let's see if we can get that close to on there. Oh. Oh. Do you want my tiny fingers? You know, MSD. They did not make this for the portly man. Oh, there we go, I got it. And it's an 11 30 second wrench. The wrench you always throw immediately out because you're never going to use it. Looks like I need it now. I never did that. Never did what? I never threw the wrench out because I didn't think I needed it. <laughs> Why do you throw them out? Oh, you don't because you. Don't. But that's probably the nicest snap on wrench you have. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's never been used. <laughs> Because you can't afford MSD, I know, it's fine. Okay, so we got... What I have is metal. So we got that on there. Now this... Should go like that. That on. Hopefully I'm putting this back together the correct way. I think I am. Did I do that the right way? Yeah. That's how it goes. Right. This little thing on there. Now what we're gonna do is struggle. So again, those are those big uh, springs. We'll put these smaller ones on. Maybe it'll just go easy. Cause the camera's on. Or it's gonna fling away. Worst case scenario, it hits me in the eye. Best case scenario, we lose it. What a hassle. They give you a tool for this. Where's your little hook pick? Probably on the ground with the rest of my tools. It's like I have two Joshes here today. Where's all your tools? Lost. So I like the welder and the grinder because it's only two. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now we have the lightest springs possible with the smallest amount of curve. This fits one way. Do that. Put it all back together. Now, we gotta get the booster pack, see if we can bump this motor over. 
find top dead center, drop the distributor in. I think that's where we're gonna leave this video, mostly because we out of parts. But tomorrow, if we get a rad hose and a few little odds and ends, we should be able to fill it up with water and run it. Be pretty cool, eh, for the first time. Pretty exciting stuff. So let's get set up with some electronics and we're done. It's just like a ready to run deal that has a little connector. So we'll hook that up. No MSD box required. Oh, it's got assembly lube. Oh, there's my screwdriver. I <laughs> put it in the box, I wouldn't forget it. It's using the wrong one. Perfect. Okay, be back right away. Okay, now go. You said ready. I know, but I didn't hit the thing and you just started talking. Is this on? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to bump it over. So I don't have my starter Muromatic, so that, yeah. You just so got to Joshua-matic. You just got to bump that against the the deal there. These angle plugs. There, Are anything. you bumping this against, sorry? Just, I, well, I have oh, the... the no, that's 12 volts. Just where the, the, tw the red goes to the extension. <laughs> yep. We gotta, we gotta bump it. More. Shorter than that. Okay, we're coming up on it. Eh, you can probably just roll that over now by hand. Get our, uh, get our deal. Man, that little starter. It's faster than I thought it was gonna be. It's a Amazon, <laughs> and all plugs are in it. Amazon junk starter, and there's no shims in it, and it doesn't even go war, war. Yeah, I'm impressed. Might not. Oh, nicely shiny, shiny machine too. You might have to bump it. That's not really going easy. I need a bigger wrench and I'm lazy. So just right quick. Yeah, okay. uh, so now we're right on those double marks. This balancer has a double mark followed by a single mark. And we're... I'll give another one. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we'll, we'll go on just the main one. So now we got to back it up a little. See if it'll go easy or not. I have a feeling it won't. Maybe. That was tight. Let's just try to go again instead of trying to screw around because I'm lazy. We'll just gotta get it close. Get it. Okay, we're coming up on compression. You went past it. Man, you're, you're, you're uh, we need to fix the little button. Let's go again. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> That's perfect. It, st it stuck. It melted to it. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it though. Yeah. You're... It's right on it. That's right at I think. I had like my finger half on it, so it wouldn't do that. It, like, stuck to it. <laughs> wow. That was awesome. Yeah, I meant to do that there. No big deal. It's it's literally on zero. You nailed it. So we gotta just. Uh, we it gotta wanted that. Back it up a couple degrees. We can fix that with the. Uh, it's satin black. Nail. So yeah, we'll we'll work it back like just a little bit, and we'll drop that distributor in. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we have to pick which is gonna be number one. So in this case, I'm gonna do that as our number one cylinder. Could you pick any one? You can, I guess. Can it be that one? I'd rather it's not. Can it be that one? It, it yes, but this in this case, this is number one. Can it be that one? So anyways. I've marked How the cap, about this one? and when the cap's on, that's where it wants to be on the body. So now, the idea is we have to drop this in and uh, line those up. So when it, when those are both lined up exactly, and uh, with the time the way it is, it will be. I think we maybe got to two degrees or something like that. Advance. So we'll see what we can accomplish here. This is where we probably have to bump it again, and then have to start the whole process. gonna be a pain. We could get in there with the, the screwdriver maybe and turn the oil pump or just bump it again. That's all I would do. And the internet always loves it. Why don't I just get the screwdriver turn it? Do you have a really nice clean screwdriver? Uh, a nice clean screwdriver. Why do you that? It's like, it's like the internet hires you to come over here and uh... Man, I don't even watch your videos. So that's not good. I know who you are. I know who you are. 
This is great. I, I like when you're here. I would have just bumped her over and then took the attitude in the... Uh... Man, this fender's going to fall off. There, well, there's only two bolts holding that fender in, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is great. The, thumbnail. the trick is get your buddies to drop off a bunch of parts and uh, totally ignore everything else. Oh, yeah, this is a super magnetic screwdriver, too. It's definitely not going to be any metal in there. It'll suck the metal out. Oh, man. I wiped it off on my shirt. You saw me do it. Did you even look at the distributor as to what way the thing wanted to go? Yeah, it's pretty close. It? I didn't look, I guess. I saw you not look. I saw you just guess. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's as bad as I would do it. I'm trying to keep continuity here. <laughs> yeah. I really bring out the worst in people. So I've been in Dallas for a while. It's not even on the... There we go. See, it's still fucked. What do you just bump it till it falls in? That's what I do, yeah. <laughs> Pure laziness. He's got to make sure, like, it's going to give it a, so I put it like one tooth. Yeah. Or whatever, over, and then just bump it. You want to just do that and be lazy? No. You're going to turn it again? I'm All right. try to wrap my head around it now here. Well, here, if we do this, the, uh, it has to be side to side. Ish. Driver's side slightly forward. See how much longer this takes? Just bumping it over and hearing about it on the internet. Look at this nice piece though. Build it. What a big dollar piece. So don't drop it. Oh whatever. It's only money. I can only afford a PW one for like 200 bucks. That's all I can afford too. This one's on a payment plan. Nope. I was gonna go. I felt like I was gonna go for a second. <laughs> Just pop it over. Be done with it. You do it if you want to, but I like this better. All right. Well, keep trying. This is hey. It's good. Uh, Danny loves the content, and honestly, it's nice to be on me to give someone a little bit of attitude versus the other way around. I think you give a lot of attitude. Me? Yeah. Are you struggling? Can we yeah. hold that? <laughs> no, I don't think that's... So you want that like that there? Yep. Yeah, it should be fucking right there. Yep. Well, let me try it three more times, then we'll bump it. <laughs> you want me to hold I that? Have, hi, Josh's bug goes <laughs> in the air, too. Hey, look, look at the look bend. It. Look, look at this <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my... my uh, Six is that uh, Jalvers method? Is that Derek from Vice Grip Garage? He wants it to just go in <laughs> Man, so bad. Go in. He wants it to work so badly. Man, I think I think you get the wrong shirt here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna want to bump this, aren't you? Well, I wanted to bump it on the first try. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would do. That's what Murr would have done, and that's how I learned it. Pull it out, turn it one tooth, and they'll bump it. <laughs> the silence is deafening. <laughs> oh, hang on, what do we got going on here? You want that about in the middle? Man, every other time, I just turn it a little bit, and it drops in, it's like not a big deal. So we should be able to just hit it and give it a Quick one, if you don't mind. Do you, it's gonna stick to it. We right need a, uh, just like rub it across. You wanna run a bigger gauge wire? No. Ready? Yep. Oh, hang on, I got the right way. There we go, try it now. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Does this have an adjustable collar on it? No, it doesn't. No. You need it again? There we go. So now we're going to have to just double check our work here and bump it till we're on number one again. Hit it. Hit it. Go. Uh, it's pretty close. Yeah, that's perfect. So that actually, we nailed it again. That's... Man, you got right on. It might be four. Four degrees, zero. So now the motor's on compression. Yeah, kick that away. So we're on the compression stroke. Where's my telephone again? And uh, what is that? 
so that's on four degrees before top dead center and the uh, the mark they line up so now we do that it'll be close enough to run and then we can adjust it with the uh, the distributor swing itself so what now, were you doing when you were like blocking something there you just put your finger over number one uh, you take the spark plug out and as it comes up you just know what's on the compression stroke so when you want to set your timing you want to make sure number one cylinder is at top dead center so compression all the way up both valves closed ish you know what ask drag week john on the next video with him because he'll explain it way better than me all i know is this will make it run enough that we could play with the distributor to, to set the timing properly but with no lower rat hose it's irrelevant so now i got to get a tie down which i have in the other garage for it which will be nice and rusty i think that's it for the night so josh is learning here what you do with dd speed shop is every time you need a wrench you just grab another one so like <laughs> 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 Honestly, <laughs> it's, not, it's not bad. Oh, those are terrible. See, that's oh, what happens. This one too. See, yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. Is I grab my favorite wrench to start, and then by the time you're on your last one, you're like, oh, this one's junk. Um, so I had to paint the tie down. It's an accelerator. Danny did them too. They're terrible. That's not good. But they're so. What you can do is they're like a box end. You can you can roll it. See? It's the wrong direction. Well, oh, you, they flip. You can, it's like 180 out. I don't like that. No, it's terrible. Yeah. It, it's kind of nice if something's really loose but hard to get to, you can kind of get to it, but I'm not gonna lie, that, that right there is a box end wrench only. Yeah. So we were using this cheap Chinese stuff I had kicking around, but then I found a factory GM one, so I just gave her a quick coat of, quick coat of paint. Do you have a, the washers on there? I don't know if we set it up, but everything had to be spaced out with double washers and everything was a, I guess you, you want, want to put, put do you want to try with a double washer this one? I feel like we'll just double washer it. Yeah, I think so, yeah. You know, everything, so I bought new pulleys, factory water pump, it's a Gates water pump, like name brand, and just nothing fits. Like it's just it's it's absolutely Oh you know what that did push this one sits way further back. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I feel like tomorrow will be a oh yeah, this isn't even gonna go. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. That'll 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 be fine. That's gonna push ahead, which actually we wanted to go ahead, didn't we? Yeah. So it needs one more washer there, actually. If you just put one more, take that apart and put one more washer where you were. Yeah. And it'll be uh, exactly what we want. Oh, <laughs> you really did you speed shop that, didn't you? <laughs> fine. So, anyways, I painted the hole down. So we'll do the distributor tomorrow. Yeah, or uh, the dangers on amount of threads. What? It's fine. You want a longer bolt? Yeah. No. Okay. That, eh, that's fine. <laughs> I've learned you only need as much thread as the size of the bolt. So a three eighths bolt only need three eighths worth of threads. I think we only have about as much thread as there is washer. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> three washers. No, I meant one washer. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Just tighten it if it strips. Well, that one you can put all the way through and not on the back side if you have to. That's not even a big deal. So tomorrow, we'll let this set. Tomorrow we'll get, to, oh, I think that'll be perfect actually. Let's just see if this lines up. Wow, that is not even close. This is bent too though. Man, why are they all bent? <laughs> Could be how I store things. Tomorrow we'll get rad hoses. Next video, rad hoses, a rad hose anyways. Uh, miscellaneous hose clamps. We got the fuel all hooked up. We'll run plug wires, distributor. We got to get fuel for the thing, and uh, put a little water in it. It's a, it's five sixteenths, and it's also stripped. It's stripped. <laughs> yeah, there was a nut on the back. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that on camera. Yeah, look, there's not one thread in there. It's machined, but a new one's coming tomorrow, so we'll do that too. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below, leave a comment, and uh, you know, get out and work in the garage with your friends, even if they're terrible people. And check out ddspeedshop.ca. And do that too. See you on the next one.